What's up Achievers, Jason Pack here, and today we're talking squats. Achievers, it's so great to see all of you again. Hopefully you had a wonderful holiday and a happy new year. And what better way to kick off 2018 than talking about squats? All right, so back squats. They're known as the king or queen of all lower body exercises. And for good reason. They're super functional, they're total body, and whether or not you're a power lifter or a bodybuilder or an Olympic weightlifter or even just someone who's just training to get in the best shape of their life, they're a staple in any one of those people's programs. So regardless of your goals or whatever you want to accomplish and where you're starting from, the squat will be a key component to any strength training regimen. So you might be watching at home and you might be like, Jason, I get it, squats are great, but they just don't feel great for me. I feel like I'm not built to do squats. And I would say, not with that attitude. Okay, just kidding, I probably wouldn't say that. I'd probably say, let's go check out your squats. We're gonna figure it out out there. Let's go surfing, come on. Everybody's learning how. All right, so the first thing we'd want to address is your stance. A good stance can really take care of a lot of other issues. Most people end up squatting with their feet and hips a little bit too narrow. So this next drill can help you out quite a bit in terms of finding your optimal stance and position. What I want you to do is grab some sort of sturdy object, whether it's a support beam or a pole or a squat rack like I'm showing here in this video. What you're gonna do is you're gonna set up with your feet about hip width apart. And then from there, use the bar as leverage and slowly descend down into your squat pattern. And what I want you to do is at that very bottom position, I want you to try to shuffle your feet out to the sides and try to figure out where a comfortable width and a comfortable foot flare is for you. And from there, what you're really trying to think about is pushing your knees off to the sides and keeping your chest up really tall so that you're keeping a tall spine. Now, once you've figured out your optimal stance, what I want you to do is let go of the pole and then stand on up. If you can stand on up without any issues, then most likely this is probably a really good stance for you. However, if you feel like as soon as you let go of that pole, you might fall backwards, you might have some stability issues in your core, or you might have some ankle mobility restrictions that we want to check out. All right, so let's first address stability issues in your core. A drill that we really like to use is called wall marching. What you're gonna do is you're gonna lay down on your back next to a wall. I want you to get your knees up and your feet down on the floor. From there, most likely your rib cage and your lower back is gonna be somewhat arched off the floor. I want you to try to push your rib cage and your lower back down towards the floor so it's making contact with the floor. From there, you're gonna lift your feet up off the floor and bring your knees up towards your chest. I want you to bring your hands up towards the wall behind you and push into that wall. Nothing crazy, just a little bit of pressure into the wall and that'll help activate your core. From there, maintain that alignment with your lower back and your rib cage down to the floor and slowly march one leg down at a time. And you wanna keep your heels in close initially because that'll make things a little bit easier for you. And as you get more and more proficient with it, then you can start reaching that leg out further and further and further. In the meantime, we'd highly recommend not back squatting just yet, but something that you can do to maintain a squatting effect is use something called a goblet squat. So for a goblet squat, what you wanna do is grab a dumbbell or a kettlebell here like we show in the video. You're gonna clutch it tight to your chest and from there you're gonna sink down just like a normal squat pattern and you're gonna have your elbows push your knees out to the sides as you come down and you're gonna keep your chest up tall. The weight of the dumbbell that's slightly in front of you serves as a good counterbalance. It's almost like you're still grabbing onto the pole. That allows you to maintain a good squatting effect while still working on your stability with wall marching. All right, so now once you've developed proficiency through goblet squatting, as well as doing wall marching, you wanna retest that stance drill that I showed you earlier. So what you're gonna do is grab onto that pole again or that squat rack, drop down into that squat position, sink down, squat pry a bit, and then from there, again, try to let go of the pole and stand on up. And if you can stand on up, then congratulations, that's a good squat pattern for you. Let's go back to back squatting and see how that works out. However, if you still feel like you're about to fall backwards, most likely now, since we've ruled out the core, most likely you have some sort of ankle mobility restriction. Ankle mobility is gonna be a key component to a good squat pattern. If you can't flex your knees over your toes about three to four or five inches or so, more than likely it's gonna severely limit your squat depth. So it's something that we really want to address. Otherwise, you're going to feel like you're going to fall backwards all the time, um, just like that stance drill showed you. So a drill that we really like to use is a wall ankle mobilization. What you're going to do is you're going to stand directly next to a wall and get your foot directly up against the wall. And I want that foot straight and that heel completely flat on the floor. Now I want you to maintain that position and slowly glide your knee over your pinky toe and try to hit the wall. And then from there, bring that knee back above your ankle. And you're just gonna rock back and forth like that, trying to mobilize the ankle. 
If that feels really easy, what I want you to do is scoot your foot back about an inch or so and then repeat the same process. You're gonna keep going further and further back until you can just barely reach the wall. And you're gonna take note of how many inches away from the wall that position is. So this is a drill that I really want you to focus on. So you might be at an inch, you might be at two inches, three inches, whatever it might be. Take note of where you are and slowly work to improve it over time. We wanna to get to a point where you're about four or five inches away from the wall so that we know that you have adequate ankle mobility to squat down deeply. But in the meantime, you don't have to give up back squatting. What you can do is squat, but with a heel lift. So what we recommend is to grab, let's say, 10 pound plates and slide them underneath your heels. Keep your toes still down on the floor. What you're gonna do is you're gonna squat down with your heels still elevated, and that's gonna assist you to get down lower. Over time, what you wanna think about is lowering down that heel lift. So you might wanna switch it out for five pound plates over time, and then eventually you'll get to a point where your ankle mobility will improve because of the wall ankle mobility drill, and you won't lose any of your strength because you've been squatting with a slight heel lift. Over time, those two points meet, and you'll be squatting without a heel lift in no time. All right, so now let's say you go back to the pole, back to that stance drill, and you can stand up with really good stability because you've got great core stability as well as good ankle mobility. However, you know that you can't really get into an optimal rack position on your back because of some mobility restriction you have going on. So the rack position during a back squat is gonna be really challenging for a lot of people because it requires a ton of mobility and flexibility throughout your pecs, throughout your shoulders, throughout your thoracic spine, which is your upper back. All these areas need a lot of attention. One stretch that we really like to use is called the side-lying T-spine extension rotation. And it just so happens to hit all of those areas. What you're gonna do is you're gonna lay on your side with your head resting on some sort of pad to keep it in a neutral position. From there, you're gonna bring one knee up onto a foam roller that's parallel to you. And you wanna bring that knee so high up that it's in line with your belly button. And then from there, you're gonna grab that knee with your bottom arm and keep it in place. And with that top arm, what you wanna think about doing is reaching your thumb towards that knee, and then from there, reaching diagonally away from you and rotate that thumb the opposite way towards the floor. This way, we're getting a really good upper back mobilization, a good shoulder stretch, as well as incorporating your wrists as well. And so if it's really difficult for you to get into this back squat position, then you might wanna focus on this drill, but also still maintaining a training effect with squats by doing things like goblet squatting or even front squatting or safety bar squatting if your gym has one. And finally, once you have all these pieces together, we wanna to talk about bar path as well as where we wanna place the bar on your back. And so everyone has different levers. You might have a shorter torso and longer legs and your buddy might have longer torso and shorter legs. Will you both be squatting in the exact same way or will you both have the barbell in the exact same position on your back? Probably not. One easy way to check if you're squatting efficiently for your body type or not is to take a video of yourself squatting from the side. What you wanna imagine is that there's an imaginary line going from the bar cap towards your foot and that's gonna be called your bar path. We want that bar path to intersect with the bar cap as well as the middle of your foot. And we know that if the bar cap is in line with your forefoot or back towards your heels, it's probably not in a good position or you're not squatting in a way that's efficient for you. As you can see in the video, I had the bar pretty low on my back and I'm squatting with a pretty hip dominant pattern. And if I draw an imaginary line straight down from the bar cap down to my foot, it doesn't quite hit midfoot. However, if I play around with the bar positioning by placing the bar up a little bit higher and I squat a little bit more upright and a little bit more quad dominant, I'm able to get in a much better position for myself. But again, this might be a good position for me, but it might not be the best position for you. You might need to have more of a hip dominant stance. You might need to have the bar a little bit lower in order to get the bar path directly over your midfoot and be efficient for you. So definitely try to take a video from the side and see whether or not the bar path is aligned where you want it to be. And that's it for today, folks. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Please hit that little thumbs up icon below if you did. Subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, peace, love, and muscles.